Well, with the situation in Syria, I thought it'd be appropriate to make a video regarding nerve gas. Um, because everybody talks about nerve gas, but I don't think a lot of people actually know what it is. Uh, so, nerve agents, or nerve gas, um, are a weapon of mass destruction. First discovered in Nazi Germany in 1936, I believe. And they were the first agent was called Tabern gas. And Tabern gas um, was discovered in a pesticide factory. And essentially a lot of pesticides are very similar to nerve gas. Wasp spray is very similar to nerve gas in a very weak form. And what makes nerve gas so dangerous compared to other chemical weapons is nerve gas can kill from skin contact and it only requires a tiny amount to kill from skin contact. Tabern, the first gas, and while this is the weakest nerve gas, still needed only about a gram to uh, several grams, a gram, a couple of grams, to be uh, in, come into contact with the skin to kill in a couple of hours and if it was inhaled it would need even less than that and if you were in an enclosed space with it it would kill much faster as well um, so the more essentially gas you're exposed to the faster it would kill you the faster its effects would come into play and you wouldn't need much at all to kill you to give you some idea uh, of the lethality of that one gram of tabum is equal to one milliliter of it, depending on if it's in liquid form or in gas form. And one milliliter, obviously, is was enough to kill somebody through skin contact, even less than that if it was inhaled within a few hours. Now, um, obviously, one milliliter, I think that's nothing. You get a litre bottle of water, that's not very lit big. But a litre bottle of water would have had enough of the gas in it to kill a thousand people if it was sort of carried on the wind effectively or whatever. So nerve gas was absolutely lethal. Now the very famous one that the Germans discovered after it was called sarin. Sarin was the second of the nerve gases or the nerve agents and um, like it was like tabern only it required an even smaller amount to kill. Later in the war they developed soman which is even more dangerous than sarin but soman is less sort of heard about today. Sarin seems to be the favourite of everybody and in Port and Down in the 50s they discovered with an agent called VX which is the most dangerous of the lot it's a separate set of groups in the other nerve agents but it's still um, a very similar type of thing and it will kill you in the same way and um, with nerve gas how it works essentially when it comes into contact with the skin or it's inhaled it blocks the ability for the brain to communicate with all of the bodily or body's organs and sort of bodily functions. So if you've seen those videos from Syria where there are people essentially spasming on the floor, that's because the gas is blocking off the uh, brain's ability to communicate with the organs and the other body parts. So death from nerve gas normally results in, um, unlike a lot of what they say in the Hollywood films, you know, you spasm so hard you break your neck, it's because your lungs and your heart stop working because your brain can't communicate with them. How nerve gas kills is very similar if somebody has a spinal injury where the brain can't communicate with the rest of the body, it's very similar to that. And the higher the dose of the nerve agent, the faster it affects and kills somebody. Um, so that's how it kills. Now, obviously, as you can imagine, nerve gas is incredibly dangerous if you add a very big amount of it in a missile or something, hit something, it will spray it all out and the tiny amount it needs to kill somebody and the massive amount you have that comes out make it a weapon of mass destruction. Um, supposedly it was only a single rocket or whatever used in Syria that killed over 1,300 people, so that gives you an idea of how lethal it is. Um, so. To protect against nerve gas, you need a full NVC suit as well as a gas mask. Because there seems to be a massive trend at the moment where people are selling gas masks for incredibly high prices, saying it will protect you from nerve gas. Only partially. A gas mask will protect your face from nerve gas, it will protect you from inhaling it, it will protect you from getting in your eyes. But unless you have a full NVC suit or some other full waterproof suit, you're going to die because if the nerve gas touches your skin, it will kill you. Here we have an East German chemical suit from the Cold War. It's not the most advanced chemical suit, but it does its job. Essentially, all a chemical suit is of this type is just a waterproof jacket. If there's nowhere that the gas can touch your skin, and as long as your respiratory functions are protected from a gas mask by a gas mask, 
the nerve agent is harmless. However, the issue is obviously with nerve gas is by the time you know you've probably been gassed, you're already dead. Um, so it's a scary weapon. Uh, America and Russia, and despite America with Syria condemning the Syrian government, supposedly even though they probably weren't the ones who used it, for using the nerve gas, America still has a massive stockpile of nerve gas, enough to kill the world several times over. Russia still has a massive stockpile, enough to kill the world several times over. And like nuclear weapons, they've been stockpiled by a lot of countries. So nerve gas is a dangerous, very dangerous thing. And hopefully that's given you a bit of insight onto what nerve gas actually is compared to what it often is portrayed as in Hollywood, where it melts people's skin or whatever. Obviously there's a lot of other dangerous gases, but nerve gas is the most dangerous due to how little is required and the fact it only requires skin contact to kill. Um, I'll put some links in the video description that explain nerve gas in some more scientific detail, but this should be enough for, obviously, a video, because I'm not going to go into all the science behind it because I don't quite understand it, because I don't have a degree in anything, but that will um, explain to you a bit, so I hope you found that useful and if you were wanting to prepare against a nerve gas attack you would need an NBC suit, a working respirator and spare filters for it hope that's been useful